Hello everyone, welcome to Foreign Farming in the Philippines. It's been a while since I've done a talking head video. I don't even know if I can uh, still do them or not. I wanted to do a uh, final profit and loss for the milkfish pen. <coughs> this video has been a long time coming because uh, Marcel has been keeping the books and uh, because it was a, a loss again this time uh, and we were having a hard time figuring it out uh, we, we went over the books and went over the books and went over the books and have finally uh, figured it out um, the, that we didn't lose more money than what we ultimately did uh, is a miracle uh, considering that uh, we couldn't uh, get our fish to Cebu and the price had gone down about 25 percent. There were a lot of problems with uh, accessing feed. Ocialis, the feed company that we were going through and getting our feed at a wholesale price from we're having uh, production and delivery problems and so a lot of the feed that we bought was at uh, an inflated retail price and so that cut into the bottom line a bit as well um, it's, I'm gonna go I'm gonna throw some raw numbers at you and uh, it's a it's a little complicated on how I ended up uh, to the end so um, bear with me this is just going to be numbers for a while and then uh, some explanation and I've broken this down for this part of the video into the first and the second harvest now the first harvest was done last year and uh, then all of this year was the second harvest uh, the first harvest for those of you who have been following was when we uh, lost so many of the fingerlings due to uh, ultimately what I think was uh, low oxygen in the water. We didn't have a dissolved oxygen meter. They're about a thousand US dollars. It was never in the budget. Um, but in hindsight uh, and because nothing else uh, made any sense, I, I've come to the conclusion and I think Jason agrees that it was just low oxygen because it wasn't just our fish that were dying it was everyone's fish that were dying um, and we lost significantly a uh, significantly less percentage than all of the other uh, fish raisers in the bay and I think ultimately it was because uh, our pen itself is in the deepest water in the bay and I chose that for uh, just that reason, a higher stocking density and uh, more oxygen available in the water because there's more water in the pen. Our pens, uh, this pen is at about uh, seven, seven and a half meters of water, so it's about 25 feet deep at high tide. And at low tide, it can be 18, 19. Uh, the pens that had the worst problem uh, were the ones that were in three meters of water at high tide and it was only four or five feet deep at low tide and uh, because of the low oxygen in the water there's not that much water uh, there were guys who lost 99 and a half percent of their fish so uh, anyway uh, the first uh, harvest was 759,000 uh, 720 pesos and the second harvest all the harvest together in this the second time because we did about a seven or eight, I, I've, I've, I didn't even I haven't even checked I didn't even think to check that number uh, we did seven eight nine harvests uh, the second go around um, for various reasons and that added expense as well uh, every harvest you have to pay uh, the harvest crew um, uh, so the second, uh, the sales from the, the second group of harvests 
was 1,613,974 pesos for a total of 2,373,694 pesos. That was our gross sales. Um, that's about 45,000 US dollars. That was our gross sales. Um, well, more like 40, 47, 48,000. Um, I had not previously divulged Gabriel's salary because I didn't want contention in the bay. I didn't want the other the other uh, growers to have any grief um, from their employees coming up and saying, you know, hey, what's his name? That foreigner over there and his wife are are uh, paying uh, X amount. Uh, and you're paying us this amount we want to raise. I didn't want that uh, dynamic. And so, um, uh, we, we do plan to move forward with another uh, round of, round of uh, fish, but not yet because we don't have the feed budget for it. And we're not going to move forward it until uh, we have that uh, money in hand, all of it. Gabriel's salary was 5,000 pesos a week, which is about three or four times the going rate uh, for a caretaker in the Bay. Many are paid 200 pesos a day, um, which is, to me, uh, slave wages. Uh, we wanted, uh, and it wasn't just uh, Gabriel's salary was never intended to be um, reflective of just a caretaker. He was the uh, manager of the fish pen also uh, because we had planned expansion and uh, Gabriel was going to be in charge of it all and so that was his base salary as the manager of the fish pen. Uh, 5,000 pesos a week is uh, pretty good money in the provinces in the Philippines. Um, I know of few uh, who are making that kind of money unless they are, unless they work for the national police or they're a principal at a school or, you know, uh, salaries that high are hard to come by. So uh, the salary for the uh, and I want to explain the, the, the salaries uh, for the first and the second harvest. Um, it's not just Gabriel's salary, which is included. Uh, it's the salary for the construction of the fish pen as well, uh, the caretaker house and the fish pen. So uh, that's why it's, it's higher for the first time than it is the second. The first harvest, the salaries was, were 299,875 pesos. And for the second, it was 202,700 pesos. Uh, the second round of harvest was much lower uh, salary-wise than the first, even though we, had, we uh, paid for many more harvests uh, on the second. Uh, it, was a, it was just one harvest uh, the first time around. Um, or was it two? It was one or two. I can't remember. I think it was two. Because um, they ran out of time that first day. So two harvests versus seven or eight, whatever it was. Uh, gas, again, it's going to be more for the first batch of fish than the second. Because I was doing a lot of running around with the red van, bamboo, materials. Um, back and forth to set through the San Francisco property where it was being built. Again, running around getting feed, um, and and that and and the first time, I was getting the feed retail everywhere. So uh, the gas expense, the first uh, group of harvests was eighty-seven thousand five hundred twenty-seven pesos. And the second was 49,058 pesos for a total of 136,585. And if I didn't give you a total on the salaries, it was 502,595. Now the miscellaneous expenses, and these are uh, other than feed, 
Um, these are this is for the purposes of making this a not a two hour long video. I've grouped all the miscellaneous into uh, one uh, category. Um, but let me do the feed first. Uh, the cost of feed for the uh, first harvest. Let me see where have I, where have I got that here. Um. Uh, was 405,109 pesos. And for the second, it was 1,240,255 pesos for a grand total of uh, 1,645,364 pesos. Um, the you know, if you if we if we were to stop right there, uh, the gross profit just from raising the fish with gas and salaries um, would be about seven hundred thousand pesos. So how did we end up losing money? Well, um, the miscellaneous expenses um, and many of those were first time, one time expenses. The cost of the caretaker house, the uh, fish pen itself, the boat, the repairs to the boat, the compressor, the net, um, all the improvements to the caretaker house, uh, all those expenses uh, were, were grouped under miscellaneous and those expenses were 971,160 pesos. So uh, that breaks down to a total loss of um, 882,010 pesos. But when you subtract out uh, most of that miscellaneous, it was kind of a break-even deal. But uh, you still have to include your uh, beginning expenses uh, and the and the pen, the caretaker house, the boat, the air compressor, uh, all those things uh, have to be listed in your expenses. So uh, that's why uh, we did it that way. Um, when you when you look at just total sales, feed cost, and salary, yeah, well, we made money. But uh, when you run into all your expenses, you know that's when you that's when you lose money. Now. Um, this second go around had the potential to be very profitable. So why wasn't it? Um, and this was this was the thing that um, Jason especially, uh, because it was mostly his cash, um, and. You know, it's it's why we were just going. How how did this happen? Um, the first the first harvest, um, we didn't keep track of the number of fish that we sold. The second harvest we did. Uh, we kept meticulous records. We kept good records the first time. The second time, every little thing was tracked. So we know how many fish, you know, if you're selling two per kilo, well, it takes two fish to make a kilo, right? If you're selling three per kilo, it takes three fish to make a kilo. If you're selling four, four, you know, on down the line. So we knew exactly how many fish we had sold, all right? And we knew uh, how many total kilos there was. So as it, as it turns out, and there's, you know, Gabriel had an explanation. As it turns out, uh, there were, we put in 70,000 fish in the, in the, uh, in the pen, right? Now, if we'd harvested all those at two per kilo, we, we would have harvested 35 tons of fish. All in all, and I don't have that number with me, uh, it was we harvested about 
uh, 18 tons of fish, 17 to 18, rather than the 35. So that right there um, was a was a large factor in why it wasn't uh, profitable. We were under the gun for feed, and so uh, a couple of the early harvests were just to were just to uh, buy feed for what's remaining. And uh, we did that a couple of times. And I think we got 72 pesos a kilo for some of the fish we sold. Um, some of them we sold. We sold four or five boxes and only got 40 pesos per kilo because it was the smallest fish in that particular pen. And, you know, they were, not only did we get a very low price for them, uh, it was taking six or eight fish to make a kilo, so it used a lot of fish. But I went through the numbers, and the number of fish that we harvested, not just the weight, the number of fish that we harvested. We put in 70,000 fish, and, you know, I, in these books, I don't have the, you know, for, for bookkeeping purposes, the number of fish isn't important. And I don't know where Marcel has put that number. Uh, we do have the number, the number, the actual count of fish that were both harvested. And, you know, Marcel would, every harvest, the harvest crew would get, you know, 10 or 20 kilos. Marcel would take 5 or 10 kilos. Jen would take some uh, home to her family. Um, so there was a little bit of a leakage, let's say, uh, every harvest. But... I counted those, I counted for them. Um, one, of the, one of the factors is that if you look at the, at the feed conversion ratio between the first uh, harvest and the second, and the, and the cost of feed to revenue, um, we uh, we sold uh, 759,000, uh, where's that number? 759,000 and change of fish the first time. And our feed cost was 405,000. Um, so yeah, almost double the uh, pesos coming in versus the feed cost. The second time, um, we spent one point. Uh, you know, it was 70, 70, 75,000, uh, 759,720 pesos on sales the first time, offset by 405,109 pesos for feed. So that's about off the top of my head. That's about 355,000 pesos difference. So it's almost double. We got almost double the amount that we spent on feed for the amount that we got on from selling the fish. We so we spent 1.6. We spent 1,613,974 pesos on feed the second time. Uh, just call it a million six hundred fourteen thousand. That only generated in sales. Um, where's that number? Well, that was the sales, one million six. So let me let me do that over again. So the second time we got one million six hundred thirteen. Just call it six hundred fourteen thousand pesos. We sold. The feed cost the second time was 1,240,000 pesos. So that's 350,000 pesos difference, <clears throat> which is about the same as the first time. But it, it throws our, our feed conversion from being like two to one to almost three to one. And when you factor in the number of fish that we sold, um, just to do rough math, uh, if we had sold 70,000 uh, fish at just say three per kilo, many were sold at two per kilo, 
um, but just just for argument's sake, I don't have because I don't have that particular number with me. Just for argument's sake, say that we sold seventy thousand fish at three per kilo. Seventy thousand uh, divided by three, it's about twenty-three. Yeah, about twenty-three uh, tons of fish. All right, uh, we harvested uh, less than eighteen. So where did the seven tons of fish go? And uh, that was the big question that uh, I was asking, Jason was really asking. Um, and it wasn't just the tonnage. Um, it was actual fish that were lost. Uh, I forget the number of actual, it was, it was a lot of fish. Not just a few, a lot. Um, when I talked to Jason about it, I had that actual number in my head, uh, but I don't anymore. So, you know what, we, we, you know, we, we had no choice. We, we called Gabriel over because, you know, the last harvest was, uh, the very last harvest was painful because um, we, were, we were expecting there to be uh, over four tons of fish left in that pen. And we barely harvested a ton. Um, three tons of fish at 110,000 pesos per ton is 330,000 pesos, and uh, that would have made uh, the the second uh, the second harvest somewhat profit. I mean, we would have made a profit. We would have made an overall profit uh, if those three tons of fish extra. If the three tons of fish that should have been there were there, but they weren't there. And I did the numbers because we had it in two groups. We had 50,000 fingerlings that we had put in the first time, and then we had half the pen and put in 20,000 the second time. And so I went back and I, because I, we had every, every box of fish, what size they were, what size of the fish that it took to make a, a box. How many fish it took to make a box at that particular size. And so I added up all, I added it all up. If, if it took 90 fish to make a box, then 90 fish. And how many boxes? Multiply it out. And um, from the first group of harvests, uh, in the pen that had 50,000 fingerlings in it, we were about four tons short. Uh, there should have been four tons more harvested just in the number of fish there were actual fish missing and about three tons a little over three tons in the second harvest um, for over, almost eight tons of fish and that number was like 25, 27,000 fish were gone it was a lot of fish and so you know we We've got, we, we had no choice. We, we called Gabriel in and said, hey. Um, I had done some more math. Um, we hadn't... The, the feed conversion ratio didn't support uh, the number, the, the tonnage that we had lost. Um, the, the feed that we had fed only supported about a three ton loss not a seven ton loss um, based on number of fish. Uh, we had fed about 10,000 fish uh, that had not been harvested, uh, but there were more, many more fish than that that hadn't been harvested. So, you know, we had no choice. We called Gabriel in and say, Gabriel, you know, not only are we missing tons of fish, which, which amounts to about 15,000 U.S. dollars, we're missing X amount of fish. Uh, it's not just the weight, it's the fish are missing, the actual fish. And um, right away he answered, well, it was the squid. The squid. Um, Gabriel, how many squid were there in that pen? And uh, this was the 
this was the uh, it was a interesting moment between Jason and Gabriel and I when when Gabriel said that um, he said there were 21 squid in the pens all right now, now to backtrack a little bit Gabriel had told me before that there were there were squid in the pen all right catch them Gabriel uh, get them out of there because we you know they, they eat the fish I knew that they ate the fish so did Gabriel well okay Gabriel catch them get them out and uh, he in a lackluster fashion did he eventually caught them all but it was like two weeks before harvest before he caught the last one right so it's almost six months that there's over 20 squid in that pen and uh, when he said there were 21 squid in there and we had the number of fish that were missing Gabriel 21 squid so what we're missing 20,000 fish and uh, he said well uh, they eat like five six pieces every day what so you're you know, and Jason and I looked at each other and we, you know, we couldn't believe it. So, Gabriel, you're saying that we could have been losing 110, 120 fish, fish every day to those squid? And he goes, yeah. And I, I was just blown away. I mean, if I, because I didn't, I didn't know they ate so many fish. Um, if I had known that there were, that we were losing over 100 fish every day to squid, I would have told Gabriel, you stop whatever you're doing right now and go find five or six guys and get your little spear guns, whatever you have to do, and get them all out. Kill them all. Um, but he, he never told me that, you know, they eat five, six pieces of fish, you know, when they're, when they're small uh, on a daily basis, and they get bigger. The, some of the squid that he got out of there, you know, were as big as your arm. <coughs> and this long you know 18 inches long <coughs> so um, when you uh, take 180 days and you multiply that by 110 uh, you come up with about 20,000 20, more than 20,000 fish fish missing um and at two per, ton, two per kilo, that's 10 tons of fish. At three per kilo, there's the seven tons of fish that uh, we didn't harvest. Now, since the feed didn't, the, 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 the feed didn't match uh, the amount of fish that were harvested and um, the amount that was lost. And so I, I, talked, to, I talked to Jason about it. I thought about it. And um, because we, we, weren't, we weren't behind that much feed, only enough feed that would have fed like two and a half tons of biomass, all right? So I came to the conclusion that when the fish were small, uh, you know, we put the fish in when they were this big and the squid are eating them. And then we feed them until they get this big. The squid are still eating them. We feed them until they get this big. The squid are still eating them. So everything that we fed those fish as they grow is just very expensive squid food is what it turns out to be. And um, that's what we came up with. Both Jason and I, especially myself, know Gabriel. And we trust him. And we do not believe that Gabriel uh, stole those fish or allowed them to be stole, uh, stolen. Uh, and we don't think there were any secret harvests, uh, you know, when we weren't there. I, I know Gabriel. Gabriel is a religious man and he's a good man. And uh, he's been sweating it as well because you know, like six weeks, eight weeks before harvest, we're going, Gabriel, um, your livelihood, your future livelihood depends on this, uh, just like everyone else's. We got to make this work. And um, he was concerned as well. And 
rumors uh, fly on that bay. If there were, uh, I've heard about other other growers every time that their fish, some of their fish disappear, and that has happened. And it ends up, everyone knows, there's no secrets out in that bay. And uh, no one ever said any of our fish were stolen. So, as crazy as it sounds, it was the squid. That's the only conclusion that uh, Jason and I can come up with. I had no idea that the squid could have been such a problem. Well, now we know. It's turned out to be a very expensive learning curve. Um, you know, moving forward, if we ever do come up with the capital, see, here's the thing. So, um, if we had not lost over 20,000 fish and had been able to raise them up to harvest because we would have had the money uh, to raise them up to harvest. That's 10 tons of fish. Uh, that's a million one hundred thousand pesos uh, of fish. And if we had uh, harvested those fish this time, you know, as, as stocked as we could have harvested them, would have covered all the miscellaneous expense. So it would have paid for the pen itself, it would have paid for the caretaker house, the boat, everything. Everything that we put out there, and we would have, and we would have made 150,000 uh, profit after everything was paid for. So uh, that was the difference um, between having 21 squid in your pen and not. You know, we had a conversation with Gabriel, a, a, a rather tense conversation of, Gabriel, if you knew this, there were that many squid in there and they could eat that many fish every day, why didn't you tell me? Because Gabriel just said, well, there's, there's squid in there. I, I, saw, I saw a couple squid today. Okay, we'll catch them. Um, I don't think Gabriel knew for sure how many were in there until he had caught them all. Because they're, you know, squid are very intelligent. And I'm sure they're hiding down in the bottom. They're keeping a low profile until it gets dark and then they hunt. Um, once in a great while, he w I never saw a squid in the pen, believe it or not. Because they move quick and uh, they're not that active during the day. And I was always out there during the day. I saw a couple that Gabriel had caught. Um, right after he had caught them, but and I, and I saw one that we had harvested out of the first batch, who had been in the pen all that time. Um, well, you you learn. Uh, next time, I think moving forward, if we when we if and when we do this again, uh, before we put fingerlings in it, uh, we're going to have some divers in that water, and you know this. The way it was done this time is that the nets were down, uh, we raised the nets up on the side and we put fingerlings in it. And uh, there's a lot of squid in that bay. So the squid were in the pen when the net was raised up. They were in the water when the net was raised up. And uh, the squares on the net are like yay. So if they're small squid, they can get in through the net. And it's a smorgasbord for them when there's a bunch of fingerlings in there. So they grow quick, especially if they're eating five or six a day. So, you know, moving forward, the biggest thing that we have to do is make sure there's not a bunch of squid in that pen. Um, everything else worked out pretty well this time. There were no harvest disasters like there was the first time. Uh, the mistake that I made with the harvest net cost us about uh, 50,000 pesos. Um, there, were no, there were no big things this time. Uh, we should have made good money. And good money. Uh, we, could have made, we could have paid for everything and put money in our pocket, but for some squid. Um, whether or not we, we do it again right now is kind of up in the air. We're going to concentrate for a while 
on uh, shrimp farming, pond farming shrimp. Um, I may do a small test tank here uh, on the farm uh, and I might not. Uh, money's tight. So, um, you know, 50,000 pesos for a, a test tank uh, when we could rent a pond and stock it with shrimp a, a hectare in size. You know, you got to put them on the scale and balance them. And I'll go. I'll go with the pond. So, uh, those are the final numbers. Um, a net loss of eight hundred eighty-two thousand uh, and ten pesos. Um, not what we had hoped, but um, it is what it is. Um, we're hoping for better in the future. We've learned a lot. Um, we've overcome some <laughs> some bad luck. We've overcome COVID and quarantines. Not being able to sell our fish where and when we wanted to for the price we wanted. We had feed problems. We had a lot of things that uh, cut into the bottom line. Um, uh, we will do it again. Uh, just not right away. We've got to uh, build up our budget first. And so, uh, until next time, uh, thank you everyone. It's been quite a journey. I made a lot of videos about the milkfish. Um, my final conclusion is is that um, once we once we once we made it through that learning curve, the mistakes we made. Um, both harvests, uh, knowing what we know now, um, if we had the feed budget, we would be going at it great guns, but we just don't have it. And so uh, we're just going to hold off for a while. Uh, do I think it's uh, very profitable? Uh, could it be very profitable? Yeah. Um, fully stocked, that one pin uh, could make 2 million pesos a year profit. Uh, and I can say that from uh, all the numbers and all the experience that we've gained so far. It could make two million pesos in profit. Um, this is about 40,000 US. And uh, those are the kind of numbers that we had originally uh, known. And um, times 11, because we were at one point going to put, put in 11 pins. Uh, could add up to some big money. Uh, the big milkfish raiser in that bay is making a lot of money. Don't kid yourself. So, thank you everyone for joining us on this journey. It's been, uh, it's had its up and ups and downs. I can't really say it's been fun. It's been stressful, I can tell you that. Um, you know, Gabriel is out a lot of cash. I am out 25, 30 hours a week of labor for over a year and a half. Um, and a lot of that time, Jason wasn't here. It was all on me. I'm a stress eater. Um, I've gained about 40 pounds since all this began because it's just, you know, trying to take in all these problems of uh, trying to do business in the Philippines and uh, make this a success um, it took its toll but um, Jason's here now we know what we know uh, moving forward we'll see so thank you everyone please like comment share and subscribe